rejoice this time of the service when Pastor Bruce gets real nervous. And I watch him over here when the music's winding down and he, uh, he really gets nervous. And uh, so I joke about it with him a lot. So I'd like to just spend a little time this morning just talking and uh, sharing some scripture with you. Uh, my back's hurting, so I'm going to sit down for a little bit. Uh, I know that... Um, then I'll forget my water. Thank you, dear. Didn't see the sweetest thing. <laughs> now you know what makes a man, don't you? <laughs> I'm not saying I'm a man, but that's what makes them, okay? All of you are here for a reason. You're here because you love this church, and you're here because Pastor Bruce means so much to you. He's helped so many of you. And so that's why you're here. Now you're here for other reasons, for the music and teaching and things like that. I've never, I've been in the ministry for 50 years now, and, and I've seen a lot of pastors and pastors' wives. I've never seen anyone that had a servant heart like Pastor and Leslie have. And they really serve us well. When we have a need, they're both there. Well, today, he has a need, and they have a need, and we need to be there, and I know that we will be. I want to share just a few things. You know, I've been here for 10 years. Many of you have been here longer than that, and Pastor Bruce and I have really got to become dear friends. My wife and I have three sons, and I keep telling Pastor Bruce, you're just like one of my sons. And we are. We're that close. And um, we have a great relationship. And um, just one of the finest guys I've ever met. He's treated me well. We'll go out and play golf once in a while. And we do that because Pastor Bruce needs to get away once in a while. And we go out to play golf. We don't go out to score. We go out to get a release from the ministry. When we're on a golf course, we never talk about church. We never talk about you. We're out there just to be refreshed. Our minds to be refreshed. Now, I have to admit that we do a lot of trash talking out on the golf course. <laughs> And I would not want to share with you what we talk about. But we have that kind of relationship. I can pound him in the shoulder and he just laughs. And I say, you can pound me back and you can whip me, but you can't write home about that, whipping an old man. So, <laughs> so I want you to know very clearly that uh, Pastor Bruce is a pastor of Glenville Church, okay? Give him a hand. And Leslie is a pastor's wife at Glenville Church. But I know this. He would want this church to continue and to move on. I know him well enough. If he came back and found out that we'd sloughed off, I guarantee you there would be some real trash talking. I guarantee you. And so I met with the deacons last night, and um, we had prayer, came here at 8 o'clock last night to pray, and came in early this morning. And, and uh, so the staff and the deacons will be working together, and we're going to move this church forward. And we can't stop. We can't close down. Pastor Bruce would not want us to do that. And so I want to challenge you as members of this church that we need to step up to the plate. A couple of things I really want to encourage you to do to help us along the way. And that is, number one, to be faithful. Sometimes, you know, I don't know who will be speaking throughout the next two or three weeks. Maybe two or three weeks or four weeks before he gets back in this pulpit. But we'll do something. And, um, and we want you to be faithful. Sometimes when the pastor's gone, he isn't going to be here for a couple of weeks, it's easy to kind of say, well, I don't know if I'll go this Sunday or next Sunday. 
And you know who you would hurt the most if you did that? You'd hurt yourself, but I want to tell you something. You would hurt Pastor Bruce. You would really hurt him. And so I want to encourage you to do so. I want to encourage you one other way, and that is to help us out financially. One of the stresses that Pastor Bruce has is the financial load of this church. This church is not an easy church to pastor. And one of the reasons is not because of you, but because of the financial burden, especially this building. And so we're going to ask you to really step up to the plate. You know, I'm on staff, and he calls me associate pastor, whatever that means. I'm just here. But uh, one of the things that I do not have that he has, I don't have to worry about the finances. I don't sign the paychecks and the bills. And he's got to have that here to do so. And so I don't have that stress. But he does. He's lying in the hospital, and he doesn't need that stress. And we'll get through, and we'll, I, I was singing about the song that we just got through singing about broken, brokenness. The alabaster box when it was broken. I love that story in the Bible when she takes that alabaster box and breaks it, and all that aroma comes out upon Jesus. But do you realize that that vase had never been broken, that aroma would have never been there? And sometimes a church has to go through brokenness as well. And, and so maybe this is a time that we can go through a brokenness. Because it hurts, doesn't it? Now you bet it does. And sometimes a church needs to experience. We, do it, we, we experience brokenness individually, but sometimes we need to do so as a church. And I'd like to think that this might be a broken period of time in our lives. There's two ways you can go through brokenness. You can either come out on the other side a better person, a better church, or a bitter person, or a bitter church. That alabaster box, broken, that aroma. Do you realize that Jesus sits within us through the Holy Spirit of God? And oftentimes he cannot get out of us that aroma of Christ because we're not broken, because we're too proud. And sometimes things come into our lives and we become broken. And first thing you know, that aroma of Jesus Christ begins to flow out of our life. Amen? And that's a wonderful experience to see that and to happen. And so I would like to think that maybe our church is going through a period of brokenness. But we want to encourage you to stick it out. Stay with us. We'll be meeting with the staff. Uh, each, uh, each day, we have a staff meeting on Wednesday. The deacons will be stepping up, and we'll be doing this together. And we'll have a plan. We'll keep you informed. We would encourage you not to make a lot of phone calls to the family at this time because it's very, uh, very difficult for them. And to take all those phone calls, uh, somebody suggested, hey, Connie, that maybe we could have a card shower and just send cards here to church. And when they get back here, I guarantee you, we'll shower them real good, okay? And I promise you, as soon as we get the Remind going, we will keep you informed as to what is going to take place. But I've, I've sat around Pastor Bruce enough to know that if we let things down, if we don't get this fall kicked off, and Rachel mentioned all the fall ministries that we have, if we don't get involved, we just said, well, Pastor Bruce isn't here, Leslie's not here, we can't do that. We've got to move forward. I want to... The youth ministry had a great time last night. The children's ministry, all the classes on Wednesday night and Sunday morning. And so, um, will you do that? Will you stick in? Yeah, come on, give me a hand. Yeah, we're going to stick in here. We're going to do it, and we're going to make it happen. In just a few minutes when we're through, we're going to come up and go to pray for Pastor Bruce, and we want you to be a great part of that. I'd like to just share a scripture with you, and I think it'll be up on the screen here in just a minute. It's Romans chapter 5, or chapter 8, and I'd like to share just four scriptures. And I'd like to read the first one, Romans chapter 8, verse number 26. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought. We don't know how to pray for Pastor Bruce. When you come up here pretty soon, I know we'll utter some words, but deep down, we really don't know what to pray for. But that's when the Holy Spirit of God comes along. He maketh intercessions for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And this is a very special time that we need an extra amount of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Amen? 
We need the Holy Spirit of God, the power of God upon our lives, and the power of God upon the life of Pastor Bruce, and to bring him out of this illness that he finds himself in. But this scripture says we know not what we should pray for. I'm so glad that the Holy Spirit oftentimes just says to me, Al, why don't you just keep your mouth shut and let me take over, and I will do the praying for you. Have you ever experienced that? If you haven't, maybe sometimes we should. See, we think we always should be talking. And we're not very spiritual if we're not talking. We need to be talking to God and about God. and We just need to be going. Sometimes we need to be quiet because we don't know what we ought to pray for. And so the Holy Spirit comes along and makes the intercessions for us. Now notice the next verse, number 27. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercessions for the saints according to the will of God. See, the wonderful thing about praying and let the Holy Spirit of God taking over in our prayer life is that the Holy Spirit knows the will of God. He already knows the will of God for Bruce, our pastor. He already knows the will for what's going to happen. See, we're sitting here wondering, aren't we? If we don't know. When I talked to Leslie at 6 o'clock last night, I could not understand what she was saying. She was so broken. And she was crying, and Brett had called me, and then she talked to me. And then I talked to her at 9 o'clock last night, and she said this. And she was very clear what she was saying. She said, well, I had my meltdown. Bless her heart. I had my meltdown. Now I feel better. I talked to her this morning, and she just was, I could tell she was, emotionally she was much better. But we do not. And we have no idea. But God, the Holy Spirit, knows the will of God. Now, you've heard this scripture many, many times, haven't you? And we know that all things work together for good. doesn't say all things are good. That scripture doesn't say all things are good. Most of the things we go through, a lot of them hurt. But all things work together for good to those that love him. To them who are the called according to his purpose. I have no idea why this happened to Pastor Bruce. Don't tell me that God said, okay, Pastor Bruce, I need to teach you some lessons. I'm going to do this to you. All right. That didn't happen. Something in the physical realm took place in the brain. And it's not good. But I know this, so whatever it is that's happening in his life, God can take it and work it to good not only for Pastor Bruce and his family, but for this family right here. And for some reason, I think he's going to do that. I think God's going to do something in this church that maybe we've never experienced before. Don't you hope he does? Now, we don't like to see Pastor Bruce go through this, but he's going through it, and God will use it in such a marvelous way. Let me tell you something. As members, young people are in here today, and our children, and young adults, seniors. God is speaking to us right now, to you as individuals. What is this experience? How is it going to affect you? How it can change your lives? How can you grow spiritually through Pastor Bruce lying in that hospital bed right now? See, God wants to use those things in our lives. And I know he will do that. If we open up our hearts and allow him to do so. Let the alabaster box be broken upon our church. And let that aroma of Christ to be pouring out. Into our neighborhoods. Into our ministries. I love this last verse. Verse number 29. Most of the time when people look at this. They talk about election and predestination. And all those things. And I just kind of pass over all those. Because I want you to read it real clear. For whom he did foreknow, he already knew this was going to happen to Pastor Bruce, also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son. All the things that happen in your life, foreknowledge and predestined, not predestined for salvation, but be predestined to be conformed to the image of Christ. That you would look just like Jesus. That's what he wants. And so all these things that happen in our life work together for good. What is the purpose behind it all? 
that we would be made into the image of Jesus Christ. And that brings honor and glory to the Father. Incidentally, the same thing can happen to the church, that we might be conformed to the image of Christ. That's exactly what God wants from Glenville Church. You know, we live in a society today of hate and anger and bitterness and, and uh, uh, animosity and agitation. And, and I don't know why we do so, because if you know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, he wants to eliminate all that drama within our lives. There's no reason for it. The only reason we do that is because we're selfish and we want our way and our words and whatever it might be. God is wanting to raise up some churches in America today that walk and look just like Jesus. Act like him. And to be like him in our behavior, the way we speak and the way we handle situations, that's what God wants us to do in our lives. And sometimes it takes a brokenness. I love Psalms 51. If you have your Bibles, you can turn there. It's not going to be up on the screen. You know, David had committed terrible sin. And um, it was pointed out to him. In Psalm chapter 51 is when he cries out to God. He realized what he's done. And in the first part of that chapter, he says to God, I acknowledge my sin before thee. And against thee and thee only have I sinned. Sin is always against God. He acknowledges that. And he works his way down through this chapter. And at the end, I want you to listen to what he says. In verse 16, Psalms 51. For thou desirest not sacrifice. He said, God, you don't want sacrifice. If you did, I could give that to you. Thou delightest not in burnt offerings. He said, I could give you that. I could bring you burnt offerings and sacrifices. But you don't want that. But then in verse number 17, he says, The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit and a broken and contrite heart. O God, thou wilt not despise this. A broken spirit and a broken heart. Now, church, that's somewhat what we're going through right now. Because I know you love Pastor Bruce, and I know when we made the announcements or when you found out, you hurt because you love this family so much. A contrite heart and a broken spirit. You know what that is? That is a sweet savor to God to know that we as a church understand brokenness and realize, God, you accept that. You don't need me to sacrifice my life to you or my body. You don't need burnt offering. He wants a broken spirit, he wants a broken heart, a broken alabaster box. That's what pleases him. And so that's kind of where we're at right now.